subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Rhinos are some of the largest megafauna alive. They are herbivores, they are supremely powerful, and all species of rhinos that are alive today can reach up to 1000 kilograms in weight. They have one or two horns and they have a protective thick skin which acts like an armor. Modern rhinos began to disperse from Asia about 23 million years ago, we think. And there are five species of extinct or alive rhinos today. Two are native to Africa and three are native to South Asia. The Indian rhinoceros or the greater one-horned rhino once roamed all the lands ranging from Pakistan to Myanmar and we suspect maybe even up to China. Now we have some more evidence for what the rhinos were up to a few million years ago and the findings also offer a surprising confirmation of some geological evidence about the Tibetan plateau. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Before modern rhinos became modern rhinos, there were giant rhinos that walked the earth millions and millions of years ago. The genus Paraceratherium belongs to one of the many extinct giant rhinos, including some other genuses. These rhinos were some of the largest mammals to ever have lived on land and all of these rhinos had individual bones and skulls and legs that were much bigger and much longer than any large land mammal alive today. Their bodies were built for open grasslands and woodlands and for humid and arid conditions. We've discovered giant rhinos in fossils, obviously, which is how we know so much about them. These fossils have been found mainly in Asia, which is parts of China and Kazakhstan and Pakistan. Six genera of giant rhinos have been described and all of them have been described in China. And the Paraceratherium genus has been the most widely distributed, including being found in Europe and West Asia. But all these giant rhino fossils have mostly only been small fragments. The only genus for which we've discovered ample number of bones to have a structurally sound understanding comparatively is the Paraceratherium. It existed about 35 million years ago to about 23 million years ago. Its exact size is unknown, but it was about 5 meters tall and about 7.5 meters long. It is thought to have weighed between about 15,000 to 20,000 kilos. It had a long neck, much like a giraffe, and that neck was over a meter long. It also had incisors like tusks and also an elongated upper lip, kinda like an elephant's trunk. It also used to eat and feed very much like the giraffe from the plant tops, and it did not have a horn like its relatives do today. All of this we knew about the giant rhinos, we already know this, but there's still a lot of mystery. We don't know how these rhinos came to be, we don't know how they evolved, and most importantly, we don't know how and why they went extinct. A new study published in the scientific journal Communications Biology this month describes the fossil evidence of a giant rhino. This is a Paraceratherium and the species is called Paraceratherium lingzaeans, which is named after the Lingza Basin in Gangzhou province in China. This is at the northeastern border of the Tibetan Plateau. It's a new species, it hasn't been described before, but it is dated to about 26.5 million years ago and it is tightly linked to two other species of Paraceratherium, plural Paraceratheres. With the help of comparison with these other species and their fossils, researchers were able to map the species both spatially and temporally. The fossil is not complete, but it is still a completely preserved skull and a jawbone from one individual and three pieces of vertebrae from another individual. These fossils were actually found in the same area that multiple other megafauna fossils have been found before. The Lingza Basin has sediment layers that are almost 2 kilometers thick and they hold the fossil records of about 30 million years in time. 
they were actually discovered in the 1950s by farmers who didn't know what they were they thought these fossils were actually dragon bones so they started selling these to traditional chinese medicine makers until the 1980s when paleontologists realized what was happening the fossils in this formation and basin are especially well preserved for the ages of about 28 million years ago to 23 million years ago. And the whole region, this entire area, has been the subject of active paleontology for decades at this point. So in May of 2015, the paleontologist Tao Deng and his team who were studying the area came across something really valuable. They discovered a complete skull and jawbone of a giant rhino and they also found three vertebrae from another individual. Their minds were completely blown because one, they did not expect any specimen to be so well preserved and two, they did not resemble the species to so closely resemble the Pakistani giant rhino, which is the most well known and well studied. It was in fact the first giant rhino fossil to ever be discovered. The species that was discovered now is likely the last couple of species of the Paraceratheres. It mainly lived in the Central Asian regions, but the new findings offer more insight into how the giant rhino moved from Central Asia to the Indian subcontinent, where the first species of Paraceratherium was discovered. So based on similarities to the fossils, the new findings show that the giant rhinos were in fact moving freely between Central Asia and the Indian subcontinent about 35 to 30 million years ago. The researchers state that the tropical conditions at the time allowed for the giant rhino to go down to the Indian subcontinent and also to return to Central Asia, which actually meant that the Tibetan plateau was in fact not as uplifted as it is. This is something that we already know kind of from geological evidence which also suggests that the Tibetan plateau had some low-lying areas up until about 25 million years ago even though the formation of Himalayas had begun much earlier about 50 million years ago when the Indian plate came and collided with the Eurasian plate. The new study also shows some geographical patterns in these giant rhino and rhino ancestor movements and distribution. Just mapping rhino fossils across the globe shows that the rhinos didn't cross from Asia to Europe via the Ural Mountains in Russia. The mountains would have acted like a geographical barrier. Instead, they moved from Central Asia to Turkey as evidenced by fossil evidence. One of the researchers spoke to the National Geographic and they have mentioned that they are working on new fossils which have not yet been described but which actually show that after the giant rhinos arrived in present day Pakistan, they then made their way into Turkey across what today is Afghanistan and Iran. Some of the fossils that can answer this key question of movement have sadly already been destroyed in civil and military conflicts in Pakistan, but paleontologists and archaeologists have learned lessons from instances like these in the past. The new fossils, for example, are tightly secure in a paleozoological museum in China. For now, scientists are continuing to study these fossils and look for more fossils that can help characterize this animal's body mass, muscle structure, its shape, behavior and much much more. And now the attention will also likely shift towards studying the Tibetan plateau a bit more, a place that is already very rich in geological history and will also likely prove to be very rich in paleontological history.